Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. We're going to start talking about RIP version 2 and RIP NG. Now, we spoke on it before, but it was very brief. We're going to get into the details of these routing protocols. Now, again, the basics of these routing protocols, RIP version 2 and RIP NG, are the same. The only thing that changes is the configuration uh, of the routing protocol. So, now we talked about something that is a uh, RIP is a distance, and I'm just going to abbreviate distance vector routing protocol which means again that's looking at the distance meaning the hop count how far away is it and the direction that it's going to take and the direction it's going to take so that's what a distance vector is that uh, the RIP uses the Bellman Ford algorithm and again I'm going to I'm put algo not zero so you understand what I'm talking about the algorithm that's what does the calculation the math and all of it. Now, what we need to understand is that RIP itself, just like RIP NG, has a max hop count. And we talked about it already. Hop count of 15, not 0, 0.25. 15, which means if you see within your writing table, you won't see if it's 16 away, that means that network is unreachable. It's unreachable. Now, one thing in the new test, what I've seen in the, the newer books, they don't really get that deep into RIP. They really do not. They really just want you to know how to configure it. But there's certain things that I'm going to tell you anyway because you need to understand. All right, now, definitely you need to know the administrative distance, admin distance of RIP, which is 120, right? And you learned that in the previous uh, lesson that I showed you. The admin distance is 120 because it is important because depending on the administrative distance of any other routing protocols, that's the way it's going to decide who's going to make it to the routing table on the administrative distance when you're talking about, you know, hey, RIP, EHRP, or SPF, or static routes, depending on the AD, administrative distance. So for RIP or RIP NG is 120. So that still remains the same. Now we talked about timers. We talked about an update timer, which is 30 seconds. Right, which within a distance vector routing protocol like RIP, it's going to send the entire routing table out every 30 seconds. The next timer, oops, the next timer that I believe I said was the hold down timer. Hold down, it's by right. Hold down timer, which is 180 seconds. All right, which means it's going to hold that information of the update for 180 seconds. The next one is an invalid timer, which is the same as a hold down. 180 seconds means that if I don't receive an update at 30 seconds, that timer starts ticking in. All right, okay, I'm going to hold this information for 180. Okay, I'm at 180. I still don't have the information. You haven't gotten any updates still. Then that route becomes invalid. It's still in the routing table. It's just invalid. And then the last timer, which, by the way, in the previous lesson, I said 360. That was incorrect. The, uh, the flush timer is 240. So forgive me, okay? I try to keep all this in my head. But it's 240 seconds. So if it gets 180 and it doesn't receive that update, it's going to go ahead and count up to 240. All right, and they say, okay, once I reach 240, if I, don't re if I don't get an update from my neighbor, that particular route will be flush, will be taken out of the routing table altogether. So these timers, you can tweak. Why would you want to tweak these timers? Because of bandwidth issues. That's one of the things that, you know, you would take into consideration. You would say, hey, across the wide area network, we really didn't purchase a lot of bandwidth. So, you know, we're using RIP which is not the most popular routing protocol to use, all right, uh, because it's for very small networks. So if you're sending it out across a wide area network that's less than a T1 and you're using RIP every 30 seconds, and you, let's say you do have a lot of subnets underneath each particular router, and you have, let's say, seven or 10 routers, and under each router you have 10, 15, 20 different subnets. All those subnets need to be advertised through RIP. So it will send that every 30 seconds, that entire routing table. So you can play with a hold down timer to, hey, let's, let's, or, and the, all, all these timers. 
The update timer, definitely, you don't want that to go out every 30 seconds, so you can increase each one. Just remember that your hold down and your invalid have to be the same. They have to be the same. And then you can increase your flush timer after that. Now, the reason the flush timer and invalid timers also, you want, and the hold down timer, one of the reasons that you want to increase that is so it is due to something called a flapping interface. The update timer, you do it because you don't want every 30 seconds, right, your bandwidth being diminished every 30 seconds. But the other timers are really because, let's say you have a problem with that interface that's going up and down, whether it be the cable, or whether it be the actual interface itself, uh, that you have something going up and down, up and down, which is called a flapping interface. You can play with these timers so it doesn't release you know, that information, it doesn't get rid of that information as fast as you see here. So you can increase those timers. Again, the new test doesn't really, the new, even the new book doesn't really get into the timers, just know that they do exist, and you can play with it. Now, one of the things with RIP that you can use, obviously, again, to prevent routing loops and all these different things, is one of them is your hold down timer. The other one is something called split, not split A, split horizon, all right, which really means, hey, don't, simple, don't send back updates on, on the same interface. Oh, wow. Right? So here, let's say, for example, this network goes down. I think I explained it before. Uh, this router is going to update this router, right, through that interface. Saying, hey, this network is down. You can't reach me anymore the way you used to. And this router goes, cool. But this router didn't advertise this one. And then this router, his turn to update that neighbor router. So he updates this router before he gets a chance to tell him, hey, listen, that network is down. So he thinks, oh, I just got a new update that says that this network is up and I can reach it through this interface. Okay, so I'm going to update that router. And that router is going to say, no, I told you this interface, this network is down and sends it back. So that creates a routing loop. So Split Horizon is on by default to let, you know, for that not to happen. And again, that causes an issue in a frame relay network, but I'm not going to get into that. All right, when we get to frame relay or get into it again, because I think I explained it in the previous, uh, that causes an issue in frame relay, and there's a certain way you can configure frame relay to circumvent that particular issue of split horizon. But that's what split horizon is. The next thing that you can do to prevent routing loops is poison reverse. And basically, you're putting a max hop count of 16. The maximum hop count of RIP is 15. It's 15. You're giving it 16. So you're telling, hey, listen, this network is unreachable, period. So everybody gets that update saying, oh, okay, that network is unreachable. So you're poisoning the route. Understand it. You don't have to configure poison reverse. You don't have to configure split horizon. Understand what this is for. That's it. Understand what this is for. If they even ask you a question on split horizon, which I believe in the frame, frame relay in the wide area network portion, They'll mention, oh, due to split horizon and you're running this running protocol, how you can circumvent that. That's how they're going to test you on split horizon. But uh, no, since RIP has a maximum hop count of 15, that if you poison the route deliberately, now that you have to configure it, if you poison the route deliberately, you set a maximum hop count of 16. So if you're telling everybody, hey, to get to this network 16, and we know we're running RIP, all the routers are going to say, okay, that network is unreachable. It's unreachable. So we won't even, won't even look at it. All right. The next one they can use, I said again, it was a hold down timer. Hold down timer. They can use so you those, those three. Those three are the ones that really you look at it. Uh, the update, the hold down timer, hold that information for a certain period of time, split horizon, and poison reverse. Now, with RIP also, and this is, and this next command I'm going to give you, you will see in one of your simulations, I believe. All right, and again, this information that I get, I get from students that are just taking the CCNA, so I'm just letting you know what could possibly you can run into. It's called the um, passive hyphen interface, and then whatever interface you're going to use. That command uh, holds updates from 
being woo, sent out. Okay? That's what it basically does. When do you want to use something like this? I mean, RIP in itself already is every 30 seconds sending out an update. But let's say you have a wide area network or a LAN or whatever it is that you don't want. You do not want to send out updates out of that interface. You use the passive interface command, and the way you configure that is within the routing put, rot, uh, config router or router configuration mode, right? within RIP. You configure this just to passive hyphen interface, and then the interface that you don't want to send out these updates. So no updates will be sent out about the networks that you know about. You can receive updates, but you will not send out updates. So that's what it does within RIP. And again, this remains the same with RIPNG. Nothing that I said so far is different between either or. They're both the same. They're both exactly the same. It's just a configuration, ladies and gentlemen. Just a configuration. All right? So a passive interface, F00. All right? And then the last thing you can do also, let's say, and uh, right here, let's say, let's take a look at our lab. And let's say I would add, let's say that this, I will put a web server right here. As a matter of fact, let's take one out just so you can have a better visual. All right. Let's say I have a web server here. And that web server is connected to a particular interface. And obviously, we'll use a crossover cable, right? F00. And then we'll put it on the F01. So let's say this is a public web server. Put here www. So there's a command that's called default information originate or default, yeah, default hyphen information originate, which you do within uh, RIP. Okay, that will actually send out if anybody here, anybody other than this router, everybody here wants to get to that one, instead of advertising the network itself, you can do the default information originate command. All right, and what's going to happen is they're all going to get it. And what's cool about it, that they're all going to have the same hop count. That's cool. It won't increase the hop count. It will remain the same. So that's one thing with RIP that you can do. So you have the default information originate. You have the uh, passive, now where is it? The passive, uh, like a passive interface that goes down, uh, that holds uh, the updates from being sent out. So all these things are going on in RIP. One last thing, one last thing that I want to mention is the multicast, I'll go from here, the multicast addresses. This you need to know. This you need to know. For sure, you're probably going to get questions on this. 224.0.0.9. All right. That is when the updates, when RIP version 2 talk to it, is talking to its neighbors, it's going to use that information, that uh, IP address, 224.0.0.9. That's how it sends updates in IP version 4. In IP version 6, and you should see the distinction, FF02, colon, colon, 2. I mean, 9, sorry. Same, anything in IPv6 that starts with an FF, it's a multicast address. So you see they're still using the 9, and I believe you can see that. They're still using the 9, but now it's FF02 colon colon 9 versus 224.009. It is still the same multicast address, just in a different uh, method, right? IPv6. So multicast nonetheless. And that is the multicast address that RIP uses. How can you see that? How can you see that? You can type debug IP RIP. Debug IP RIP, and you can see the updates going back and forth. All right, so that is RIP. That is RIP. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and configure RIP on all the routers. Will you have to configure RIP in your certification? As of yet, no. Do you need to? Of course. If you're going out on an interview and this is not such a large uh, enterprise, let's say it's a, it's a medium sized or small network, you need to know. Or they may just ask you, okay, how would you configure RIP on this network? So if you're like, uh, 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 A is the answer, then that's a problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and configure RIP, and we'll start with this router right here. Let's move it over here. Hey, my finger's getting better. It likes it. All right, let's go to the CLI. Let's just open it up a little bit more. Now, remember, 
Let's take a look. Anytime I get into a router, one of the first things I look, I make it a habit, all right, if it's a small, right, configuration like we do here, uh, what is it, Cisco? Cisco, yes. I always do a show start. That's a rat. Start. All right, and I take a look at there. Okay, all these configurations, but I'm more interested in the IP addressing that's there, the networks that are, that are there. All right, and this one, you can see that it has a default route. You want to leave that gateway of last resort. Why do I want to leave that gateway of last resort there? Because it's a stub router. There's nothing else going out this way. So you know what? Let's just leave it there. Let's just leave the default gateway. So in case there's a network that I add, okay, it doesn't really matter because what's going to that default. Remember what that default route is? Default route, a default static route. What does that one do? That says, hey, match exactly the mask. Match exactly, I mean, match exactly the IP, match exactly the mask, and just send that out the exit interface. So that's your gateway of last resort. If you were to look again, at the, just, and this is reviewing, show IP route, the routing table, you see that, that your gateway of last resort is set to whatever. And then here you see that static default route. So what we're going to do now is configure RIP. Okay, so let's do that. We need to be in global configuration. Config T, not IT, config T, router, RIP. Do not forget, which I'm sure you're not going to have to do it, but just in case, version 2. We don't use version 1 anymore. Forget about reading about version 1. Once you're done with the test, if you want to read about version 1, great. We don't use version 1 anymore. It doesn't support classless routing, right, VLSM. Where Reversion 2 does. Reversion 2 supports authentication. All right, so there's a lot of things that Reversion 2 does that Reversion 1 didn't, doesn't, or never did, or never will, because we don't use it anymore. So forget about that, because if you forget to put version 2, again, I don't know why I'm, why I'm saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is what happens. If you have a router that has version 2, and you have a router that has version 1, the version 1 router will accept the version 2 updates. But the version 2 router will not accept the version 1 updates. That's what happens. Now, you could, you could go inside router configuration mode and say, hey, accept both. Why would you want to do that? Where well, one is just a class full routing protocol that you have to have the same subnet mask throughout the entire network, and the other one doesn't. One doesn't support authentication, the other one does. Why would you want to go back in time? That's like saying, hey, you know what? I think everybody in the company should have, one side of the company will be uh, Windows 8, the other side of the company will be Windows 98. Uh, let's try that. That's the same thing here. You don't gonna, you're not gonna do that. So if you run Reversion 2, you run Reversion 2. Forget about Reversion 1. I, I think I made that clear, right? So now, when we're advertising these networks, this is where everybody goes, what? You see that we're in the 10.1.1.4, correct? And we have the, uh, let me bring it a little bit lower, the 192.168.1.0. Distance vector routing protocols. They summarize automatically to the class full boundary. This is a class C address, right? 192. And it's using a default mask. So the class full boundary is the third octet. This is a class A address. It's using a slash 30 mask. But the class full boundary is at the 8, the slash A, right? The 10. So I want to do something on purpose so you can see what happens. Because this is the way I, I wouldn't configure it. Not because it's wrong or whatever. Just I'm not going to waste my time typing things that are are not going to happen anyway. So I'm going to go net for short, 10.1.1.4. All right, and that's all you put. And then net 192.168. Ooh, what the? Wow. Finger memory. 192.168. Oh, the numlock key. Silly man. 192.168.1.0. Enter, and what command can we not forget? 
What is the command that we have to know for distance vector routing protocols? No auto hyphen summary. Very good there, Charles. Very good. No auto hyphen summary. All right. That's it. That's all you do. But let me show you. I'm going to cheat because I can. You can't. You got to go back to privilege mode and type copy run start, enter, enter. But I want to show you something. You saw that I put 10114. I put the entire network that I'm connected to. All right. Show start. Come on. Do you see that it put 10 triple zero? Because RIP doesn't see that mask. It only sees the class full boundary. That is why it's essential to type that command. That command did not exist in RIP version one. It exists now in RIP version two and EIGRP. All right, so you must type it. That command right there, you will see it in print screens, ladies and gentlemen. All right, where, hey, the administrator can get their lands to talk to each other, but the routers connected to each other can. What's the problem? And then they show you like a routing table because he forgot to put that because everything is being summarized. Imagine everything being a class A or a class B. I think I said it in the, in the previous lesson. Where do I send the packet? If all I see is a big 10 triple zero network, but I want to go specifically to this network. The router's like, I don't know where to send you. I'll just send you out this way. So you may get lucky, you may not. So you must put that no auto summary when using distance vector routing protocols. Let's take a look at the routing table. Show IP route. Hey, there's nothing there. I just configured RIP, but there's nothing there. Of course not. There's not going to be anything there because RIP doesn't talk to itself. RIP has got to have somebody to snitch to. So you got to configure RIP in the other router, in the other router. Because remember, they only talk, they only talk to neighbors, and router 2 is the neighbor. So the neighbor doesn't have RIP version 2, but what does the neighbor have? Ah, this is where we looked at it previously. Or we configured it previously. We did a static route. But what did I forget to do? Did I do it on purpose? Or did I just forget? I think I just forgot. Uh, we didn't change the administrative distance. And all these, Cisco, let's do a show start. All right. Let's go down, let's go down, let's go down. Ba 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 ba. Basic admin configs. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Aha! We have a static, actual static routes. Not a default route, because default routes can only be configured on stub routers. Here we have a static route, but we didn't change the administrative distance. So if I configure RIP here, and I will, all right, I'm going to show you that RIP is not going to go on the routing table. Why? Because we have a static route. So let's take a look at it. So let's, let's, let's do that so you can believe me. Router, <clears throat> RIP, version 2. I also get this question a lot from students, uh, especially in the classroom. He'll ask, do we have to always do it in that order? Router, RIP, version 2, network, network, and auto summary? I said, no, no, you don't have to. You can do router, RIP, network, network, or network, version 2, and then network. I mean, whatever makes you happy. But just don't forget, and then no auto summary. Don't forget to put the commands. So this is the way that I did it, that I'm accustomed to doing it, because my brain, you know, as I grow in years, I f may forget. So I will put version 2 right off the bat, because it's easy to forget to put version 2, and then I have version 1. So router rip, version 2. Then advertise the networks, and then the very last thing, put an auto summary. Is that a rule in blood in the stone? Of course not. But it's just a guideline that I'm giving you. If you want to do it, you know, the opposite way, I mean, it's completely up to you. I'm just giving you a guideline of what to do. As long as you type all the commands in, I'm a happy camper, and so will you when you pass your CCNA. All right, now I'm going to go network. So I'm attached to the 10.0.0.0. You're not attached to the 10.0.0.0. You're attached to the 10.1.1.4 and the 10.1.1.8. I know I am. But did it not put it back to the 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
uh, 1.2, right? Oh, 2.0, 2.0, 1.2, And then what can you not forget? No auto, I'm gonna hide, uh, tab that. No auto summary, which you can in the test. I don't know if you can or not. People are telling me that you can't. So if you can, perfect. If you, if you cannot, make sure that you type out the whole thing, no auto summary. First, learn how to type out the whole command, you know, the spelling and all that, because after you get into the real world, if you're already in the real world, using this certification for, you know, credit, props, more money, whatever the case may be, you know, you forget, to, you forget how to spell, honestly. Tab this, tab that, abbreviate this, abbreviate that. But for testing purposes for the CCNA, you got to type out the whole thing. All right, so be very careful. So no auto summary, and then I'm going to do a WR, not ER. Do WR. And I'm gonna do a do show IP route. Do show IP route. And lo and behold, no rip. But hey, you hey last, you said that if two routers are neighbors with each other, they're gonna talk. Yes, I did. But I also just said that hey, we configured static routes with a lower administrative distance than rip. Because rip's administrative distance is what? It's 120. The static routes we configured have zero because we're using the exit interface. So how do we fix that? We all, we got two options. We can get rid of the static routes altogether, or we can change the administrative distance at, of the static routes and have them there as backup. If RIP goes insane, for you know in IT, things go insane because they wanna, and RIP goes bad, you still have static routes to back. Oh, you're changing routing protocols, let's say. You wanna get rid of RIP? without losing connectivity and put another routing protocol, you have your static routes that will take over for you right away. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to change the administrative distance of the static routes to 150, so they can remain in the background and RIP will get into the routing table. Let's see how we do that. So we have configured RIP already, it's there. The static routes are there, but we need to change them. So how do we do that? Let's exit one time. We wanna be in global configuration. All right, I'm going to open this a little bit more. Make sure that I'm not in the way. All right, I'm going to do a show, a do show start. And why am I going to do that? Because I want to see the static routes. Because I'm going to copy paste big time. So I'm not going to rewrite all this. So I'm going to do a control C at this moment, control Charlie. And there's my static routes right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type no. So I can get rid of, I'm going to do the first one first. I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to paste. That static route is gone. But I'm going to put it back. I'm going to paste it again. But this time, I'm going to space and go 150. I just made, I redid the static route, but now I changed the administrative distance, and I'll bring it up so you can see it, the administrative distance to 150. Ah, now that you see that the routing protocol is going to make it to the routing table. Yes, indeed. So let's do the second one. Let's copy that bad boy right there. And you can see that. Yes, perfect. I'm going to type no, and then I'm going to paste. That's get rid of, that gets rid of that second static route. I'm going to repaste it again, but this time space 150. I'm going to do it the right way, not the right way, the test way, and do a copy, run, start. That's how you got to do it. Enter. Do you want to copy to the start and config? Obviously. So just hit enter, enter again. And then let's do a show start and let's see what we see. Let's see if those static routes did change. Sure indeed, there's now, they have a 150. So it, now when I look at the routing table, what needs to happen is the following. We should not see any S's. Like, all we should see are R's and connected routes because we changed the administrative distance. Let's see if this makes me a liar. Show IP routes. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. Right? Now we are learning, and that's what this means. We are learning about the 1.0 network from RIP. 
You know it's ripped because there's your AD right there, your administrative distance of 120. We are one router away, one hop count. How are we learning this? Through the 10115. On what interface? Let me open this. On my S001. That's how you read this. Okay? And the same thing holds true. Well, that's the only one. Okay, that's the only one that's there. Uh, hmm, that one didn't update yet. Oh, this, look, look at this. Since router 3, since router 3, I haven't configured RIP on it yet. You see that my static route is still there to get to that network. Because RIP is not configured on the last router. But I can still get to that network because there's a static route for it. You see the importance? So I have a combination of connected RIP and static routes. Amazing. So then what does that tell you? You can use a combination of different things. That's why I don't want to get into the design of a network. That's a whole nother class, what's your know, course completely. But so you can start opening your mind to say, okay, I can use a combination of different things depending on what type of network I'm working with. Right? And especially dealing with the bandwidth. With the bandwidth. All right. So you see the R made it to a routing table for that particular one. Now we're going to go to the last router. Now remember, router 2 still had one S because it had that network that, you know, that's on router 3 and we haven't configured anything on router 3 yet. So let's go ahead and do router 3, last router. Okay, and let's again, let's open this up. All right, let's go to the CLI. Here we have default route, so we don't have to worry about changing anything like that. C I S C O. Cool. Config T, router rip, ver 2, version 2, network 10 triple zero. Network 192.168.3.0. And what can't, what we cannot forget, uh, no auto hyphen summary, do WR, control Z, show IP route, and there we go. Now we got full of ours right here. We have a default route, there's your gateway of last resort, but here's a one network, right? That router 2 also learned about. But router two is one hop away. We're two hops away. All right, and here is the second network, which is, or the second LAN, which is only one hop away. But we're learning it via the same interfaces. All right, because they're sending it through the 10119, and we're learning it on the 0001. Okay, and then you're connected to your directly connected networks, and you have your default route. Let's go back to router two. Let's see if that S changed for us. See that, remember? That was previous. We had an S. So let's go ahead and do a show IP route again. Did that S go away? It sure did. No more S. Now we have the one that we had there before, and now we're learning about the three. No longer it's a static route. No longer. All right, so you can see how that works, because we changed the administrative distances, the routing protocol took over, but we have backup routes, and we have those default routes on the stub routers in case, in case somebody wants to come through that we don't have a network in there, because if you look at the last routers, there's really no networks. Now we are, because we're doing a RIP, but if somebody were to add another network, we really don't need to advertise it. So let's say, you know, let's say we add another subnet here to router two, and we want to get we we put that within the routing protocol. But when he tries to get over there, this one won't have any entries. So you go ahead; it'll still get through because that's the purpose of the default routes. If the routing table has no entry for the destination network, it will use the gateway of last resort to get out. That's the whole purpose of those default routes or those default static routes at the end all right but now we're in the world of dynamic routing now that's rip version 2 but what about rip ng well 
we have to configure IPv6. So we're going to turn this into a dual stack type scenario. All right, so what are we going to do? All right, I'm going to go ahead and just come up with an IPv6 network. We're not going to subnet right now. So, or do we even have a lab for IPv6? Well, we'll just uh, make one up. Okay, 2001 colon 3200 colon uh, face colon Facebook Facebook okay and then 1000 all right colon colon and let's use a 56 all right and we'll increment on the second position new control C Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V. I'm just going to just lay these out right here. All right. Hey, come back. I'll put them down here. Give ourselves a little bit more room. All right. I'll change the numbers in a second. I'm just pasting them up there so you're going to be quick about it. Cool. I made enough. All right. So we're going to be incrementing in the second position right on that first zero on the subnet portion of it and then this one's going to be 1100 this one's going to be 1200 this one's going to be up here 1300 and this is I mean I'm not I didn't just configure this out of the blue I don't want you to think oh my god Laz is like he thinks in IPv6 no no this is from previous labs that I've done before. All right, that I remember these numbers. Yeah, I know. I got some things in my brain that I don't know how they stay there. Can't remember a phone number, but I, I'll remember this. Uh, and 1400. So we got these four networks now. Now it's important. And this is going to be the, the foundation, the groundwork for any IPv6 lab that you're going to do. So in actuality, we're doing a dual stack scenario here, a dual stack. So let's go to the very first router. Now, if you are going to do routing, and I don't know if I said this before, and if I didn't, I want to say it now. If you're going to be routing in IPv6, one of the first things you need to do is turn on IPv6 unicast routing, or you will not route anywhere, or you will not route anywhere. So. Well, we actually need to put the IP addresses, don't we? But I'm going to go ahead and just do that IPv6 unicast routing. That needs to be turned on. This command is important. If you don't turn that on, you're not going to route anywhere. But we have to go into the interfaces and put the IP addresses, right? So we have the 1000 for the LAN, and we have the 1300 between the WANs up here, right? So we're going to go inside interface F0 slash 0 enter now we need to put an ipv6 address ipv6 address and this is where copy paste comes in really handy but it's okay 2001 colon 3200 colon face colon 1000 colon colon f slash this was cool Fi oops 56 that is so cool that we can go ahead and use the actual, remember this is not a CIDR. That is not a CIDR. This is a network prefix. All right, we can't call it CIDR no more because this deals with the routing portion of it. it. Has nothing to do with the host, okay? So we put in the IP address for that. Let's put in for the serial. So we're gonna go int s0 slash 0 slash 0, enter, IPv6, all address, 2001 colon 3200 colon FACE colon and then that's uh, 1300 colon colon and we can just use one slash 56. Now I don't need to turn it on or anything. Everything's on. The interface is already on. The interface already has the clock rate. I'm just putting an, an IPv6 version address on there. Now how in the world do we actually configure RIP-NG? 
Remember I said that all you really need to do is go into the interfaces that you want it for this particular routing protocol to participate in. So all I could do, I could do it, I'll do it the long way first, and then on the second router, I'll do it the other way. Okay? So I'm gonna go IPv6 router rip one. What is that one? That's a process. That's a process. And if you put the question mark, really there's nothing else you can do here. Okay? You're not gonna change the administrative distance. You're not gonna do anything. Okay? You're not gonna redistribute. So that router IPv6 router rip one, that's a routing process. It's a routing process. Now I need to go into each interface, interface F0 slash zero, and enable IPv6 uh, rip one enable. That's it. No network statements. I just enabled that routing process on that particular interface. How simple can it get? That's great, All right? Interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. Same thing, up arrow, done. Control Z, uh, just WR. And if you look at the start, you have your IPv6 unicast routing that's on, you must have it on, okay? But when you look at the interfaces now, now you have IPv6 route one enabled, IPv6 address 2001, 3200, blah, 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 blah. So you have two IP addresses, right, on each interface. If you look at the serial down here, same thing goes, same thing goes. So let's go ahead and continue. Now, in second writer, I was going to do the short way. So we have three interfaces, the S001, S000, and the F00. And again, it's just enabling a process on the interface, right? So, okay, config T, interface, let's go S0 slash 0 slash 1. Oh, I need to put the IP address. Okay, this is, this is, what, this is the 1300 side, right? Yes. So we go IPv6, uh, 2001, colon, 3200, colon, face, 1300, colon, colon, 2, because we used one previously, 56. Oops, I forgot a colon. Colon. There we go. All right, let's do it again. IPv6. How about putting address there, Laz? IPv6 address, 2001, colon, 3200, colon, face, oh, colon, 1300, colon, colon, 2, slash, 56. Ta-da. All right, and then let's go to the, well, I'll just enable RIP right now. IPv6. RIP1, enable. What is the first thing I said that needed to be done if you wanted to do IPv6? That's correct. IPv6, unicast routing. Let's go back into the interface. Which interface was it? S00. S0 slash 0 slash 1. And there we go. So we now enabled the writing process. We never went into uh, IPv6 router configuration, right? I just went straight to the interface and enabled it. I'm going to show you something in a second. Let's go to the F00, int F0 slash 0, IP address, IPv6 address, I'm sorry, IPv6 address, and this is going to be 2001, colon, uh, 3200, colon, face, colon, and then this is, we started with 1,000, 1,100, colon, colon, and that's going to be F slash 56. And then we're going to do the same thing. IPv6, RIP, 1, enable. We got one more interface. We got one more interface, which is the serial 000. So we go int s0 slash 0 slash 0, and that's going to be the 1400, the 1400. So IPv6 address, uh, 2001, colon, 3200, colon, uh, face, 
colon, and that's 1400, colon, colon, one, slash 56, and then IPv6, rip, one, enable. I'm gonna do a DWR, and now let's take a look at the stars. So you can see how cool this is. IPv6 unicast routing, which I forgot to do. I had to go back and do it before it allowed me to run the routing protocol. And you can see here, I got my LAN, which we just did, LAN. And here's my serial, right? They're IPv6. You can see RIP1 is enabled. But look what it did automatically. I didn't do this on this router. On the other one I did, but I didn't do it on this one. And it puts it there all for you. Can't get any easier than that. That's what I wanted to show you. All right, and let's do the last router. Let's do the last router. And that was 1400, okay, this is 1200. All right, let's open that to here. All right, so enable, Cisco, config T, uh, IPv6, unicast routing. Aha, wasn't gonna get me again. So we're gonna do interface S0 slash zero slash one, enter. And we're gonna put an IPv6 address on there. IPv6 address, that's gonna be 2001 colon 3200 colon face colon, that is 1400 colon colon two slash 56. And then we're gonna enable RIP IPv6 RIP one enable all right just to do it and get it out the way and then we go into the fast ethernet int f0 slash zero enter and then we're gonna put an ip address on there ipv6 address and we're gonna do 2001 colon 3200 colon face colon 1200 oh what did i do here i hit enter by mistake okay colon uh 1200 colon colon and that's going to be f slash 56 all right and we're going to enable rip ipv6 rip one enable all right let's do a dwr let's verify that everything is hunky dory show start all right there's a unicast routing da -da 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 -da. there's ipv6 for the fast ethernet f cool 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 then we have the 1400 with the two. All right, all right, all right, all right. And then we have, again, automatically it does that for you. So let's take a look now at that routing table. Show IP route. Hey, that's that IPv4 routing table. That's correct, because we did show IP route. In order to look at the IPv6 routing table, we're gonna show IPv6 route. And now you are routing in RIP NG. There's your 1,000, right? There is your 1,100. There is your 1,300 network, right? We just hit enter, keep hitting enter. So now you're routing not only with RIP version two, you're routing with RIP NG. You're doing static routes in the background. You have default routes on the side. So you're doing all sorts of routing. That's all there is to that. That's all there is to that. So you dual stack scenario and uh, you're using multiple types of routing going on. This is RIP. Very simple, straight to the point. Again, when it comes to your certification, very minimal questions. Do know your administrative distances for these routing protocols, all right? Uh, and understand the differences between using RIP, static routes, all right? And the difference, obviously, of configuration between RIP version two and RIP NG. I'll see you in the next lesson. We'll start EIGRP.